there are some very important properties of hashing that you need to understand which i'll show you now with the demo right let's go online and get into andersbrownberg.com right so this is a website which gives you a place where you can uh, visualize and you know find out hashing and all of these things so i like it um, you know when when this kind of a, how do you say uh, website is shown as a demo so that you understand many things from it right okay now let's see what this uh, hashing is all about okay this uh, this contains two things one is data and hash right so this is the input and hash is the output that's why you will not be able to change this right information in hash it is generated automatically right now we have data and we need to put in hash okay so let's enter some data okay already there is some data what is this data uh, blank okay there's nothing there okay there's nothing there and that has a hash of this b855 whatever e3 b0 c44298 and all of these things this is the hash of blank data okay fine i'm not worried about it let's go to let's type in something called as blockchain okay blockchain is a digital data right it's a word it's a string that is stored uh, you know in a digital format right so this is the data input and it says this is the uh, how do you say hash of it okay what does that mean is this is the unique identity for this particular data called as blockchain with a capital b okay if you write blockchain this is the hash of it right there comes our first property right of one way okay i'll just write the properties here so you can make a note of it okay the first property is called as one way what does that one way mean right one way means if you know this blockchain uh, input right you can find this hash very easily we just found it out right but if i give you this hash okay uh, forget this data i just give you this hash value okay 625da44e4 something i'm giving you okay even if i tell you this method of hashing right you cannot you will not be able to find out the input data from this output okay if you know the output there is no possibility of reverse engineering to find the input data that's the beauty and that's the property of hashing called as one way right now you understand why we call it one way hash right in encryption now the previous symmetric and asymmetric if you see you can take the data encrypt it you know find cipher text and then decrypt it to find back the original data right forward and backward both are possible in hashing uh, only forward is possible backward you cannot do right so that's one property of blockchain the first property second let's consider some large amount of data okay so i have something called as blockchain which is about uh, 10 letters now right so now let's enter more and more and more details okay blockchain is a decentralized distributor ledger uh, which contains transactions and uh, the blocks are connected through hash right i keep on entering but if you have noticed right this hash remains of fixed length this is exactly 64 digits okay so 64 uh, bit length right so if i keep entering anything okay prabhu is a blockchain trainer whatever right a -G -A -G -A -G -A -G, whatever right i keep on doing this as the input size increases the output size does not increase it's a fixed length for a blank data for a 10 letter word for a, a complete sentence for a multi-page document for a 4.7 gb movie file for a 4.5 mb uh, mp3 file or a ebook or a thousand page document anything anything that you take in the world when you give it as an input if it is a digital data the output is going to be a fixed length right it will not cross the 64 digits be it whatever data you're entering right now i'll enter blockchain again it comes back okay 
64. It's the same, right? That's the reason and that's the property called as fixed length. Okay? Perfect. <laughs> and the third property is called as uniqueness. Okay? Uh, uniqueness as I explained with fingerprint concept. When I say blockchain with a capital B, right? This is the hash value of blockchain. Ends with B57E1, right? There is no other data, okay? There's no other data, not uh, another string, not another, let's say, um, uh, MP3 file or a 4.7 GB movie file or whatever, right? No other digital data in the world has the same hash as this, right? What does that mean? It's unique, right? It's completely unique only to this particular data blockchain, right? Which also means uh, for two different inputs, there are always two different hashes, right? Two different inputs cannot have the same hash. That's the property of uniqueness, right? That's all. Then comes the property of avalanche effect, which is one of the most important and one of my most favorite properties of hash. Okay. What does this avalanche effect mean? Okay. I spoke about hashing being one way, right? Which means nobody should be able to find out the input from the output. One way. Okay. Why is it difficult to find the input from the output? Because uh, you start with blank, then go to A, B, C, D, then go to 1, 2, 3, 4, and then uh, try strings, and then try statements, and then try documents, and then try mp3 files. How much will you try? Bootstrapping, it's not possible in hashing, right? It's very difficult. Yeah, that's the reason it's not possible. But let's say the word blockchain, okay, with a capital B, has this hash, 57E1, okay. Let's say blockchain space will have 57E2. Blockchain 1 has 57E3. Blockchain 2 has 57E4. Blockchain A has 57E5. Right. If for a small change in input, there's a small change in output, right? Only one digit, the last digit keeps changing, right? Then it becomes easy for you to guess. Yeah. You will say, okay, if blockchain is 57E1, then blockchain A could be 57E2 or 57E3 or something, right? It shouldn't work that way. That's why if you consider, just keep a note of this hash, okay? If you add a small space, the entire hash changes, right? completely changes. There's no relationship between this hash with, without a space and this hash with a space. There's no relationship between this and this, this and this, this and this. Completely different, right? That's the property of avalanche effect. Why is it called as avalanche effect? Because avalanche means what? A uh, small disturbance happens in the top of the mountain. It starts very slowly and then it comes into a huge avalanche, right, at the end. Uh, we might have seen it in multiple movies and things like that. So that is the avalanche effect, okay? So small change in input has a big change in the output. That is what is called as avalanche effect for hashing. Hope you have understood this, right? So four things, one way, fixed length, unique and avalanche effect, okay? Um, yeah, the algorithm that we used here is called as SHA-256 or SHA-256 as people call it, okay. Uh, there are multiple other algorithms which are, which can be used for hashing, right, like uh, uh, there is SHA-512, okay, 512 bits, uh, MD-150, right, um, <coughs> Kechak-256, right. So there are multiple multiple uh, algorithms of hashing, right? If you want, you can go through all of these things. But the SHA is used in Bitcoin. That's why it is very famous, right? SHA 256 one, that one we saw now, right? And whenever you consider this, right? This uh, uh, 625 DA 44E4, you might think that is a, you know, that is a uh, 
string right because it contains letters and numbers alphanumeric but actually that is a hexadecimal number okay hexadecimal number means what it goes from 0 to 9 right and then from a to f 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 a b c d e f right so there are 16 digits in hexadecimal numbers okay just like binary numbers have 0 and 1 hexadecimal i mean uh, decimal numbers have 0 to 9 right hexadecimal numbers are from 0 to f right so you can see here that uh, all that here is all 0 to f numbers it's a hexadecimal numbers usually how do we denote hexadecimal is by uh, giving a 0x in front okay when you say 0x and let's say 12 you know 12a then this is a hexadecimal number we can know that by using the 0x okay whenever you use 0x it's a hexadecimal value right so that's the concept of hash you can also go to this andersbrownworth.com slash blockchain slash hash you can just uh, uh, search it on google right and you will be able to go to this page just find out your name and its hash you know that will be the uh, let's say hands-on activity for now that hash is unique to your name remember that right so that's how beautiful this concept of hashing or keyless cryptography is right now we have completed cryptography uh, just as a recap we saw cryptography as a secure communication mode which has three methods one is the symmetric key cryptography another is the asymmetric key cryptography and the third one is keyless cryptography or one-way hashing right symmetric key cryptography does encryption and decryption right with the same key yeah that's why it's called as symmetric asymmetric key has two different keys called as public key and private key right encryption is done using one key and decryption is done using the corresponding key right we saw two things under asymmetric key one is used for secure communication called as public key cryptography when you want to send a message to the receiver you will um, encrypt using the receiver's public key right and the receiver will be able to decrypt using his own private key right there is another method called as digital signature which means digital signature is used for authentication if i encrypt something with my private key and you are able to decrypt using my public key right that means that i am the only person who could have sent that message right so that kind of authentication is what digital signatures give then we saw one way hashing has multiple properties like one way fixer length unique avalanche effect etc but till now you would probably might be wondering if i am not able to decrypt something right then what is the use of it right? what is the use of it that is where I will tell you one of the use cases of hashing. Okay. So let's say um, 10th of uh, May, okay, 10th of May 2016. Okay. I created a document. Let's say a, a story for a movie. Okay. I created a document. Okay. Contains something, something, something. Right. And at the end, I also add the date. Okay. 10th of May 2016. Wonderful. Now, after two years, right, in 2018, one person comes, okay, to the court and says, Sir, this story has been copied. I am the author of the story. I wrote it uh, already uh, and things like that, okay. So, now there comes a confusion, okay. Who wrote it first, yeah. Since this person has a document already, he can hash it, okay. He will hash the document which says okay all the story and everything date also is 10th may 2016 and he will store it in a uh, you know let's say blockchain okay uh, secure storage let's say okay securely he will store it somewhere immutable storage somewhere okay now whenever the uh, this second person person b comes in and says hey i only wrote the story first he can easily this person can easily take the hash say sir see this is the story this is the date okay uh, I hashed it and put it on the blockchain, which is immutable and all, right? Can you ask him to show something, right? So if he has a document, okay, which says story data, which I mean date, right? Uh, that was in 2015, then this means fine, okay? He, uh, B is the person who wrote it first. 
Otherwise, A is the person who wrote it first. Right? Why am I saying that? Why can't he change this date? Because if he changes this date, just one small thing, from 10th May to 11th May, if he changes one digit, because of avalanche effect, the entire hash will change completely. Right? And it will not match. Yeah? So, to check the integrity of the data, right? Integrity. So rem remember this word integrity. Right? Integrity means it is not tampered, it is not hacked, it is not changed, right? To check the integrity of this data, you use hashing, right? Let's look at an actual uh, example of Google using hashing. Okay, uh, if you go to GoLang download, right? So download of the GoLang programming language. You can see that there is a SHA 256 checksum. What is this SHA 256 checksum? This is the hash of this file. Okay. 21 MB file hashed gave this. 120 MB file hash gave this. Again, you have a hash for this. Right. So what happens is once you download this, right, it's not necessary that you can only download it from a Google website. You can download it from a torrent also. Right. So when you do that, how can you be sure that this file does not contain a Trojan? This file has not been tampered by anyone, right? For that, Google says, see, uh, whatever file I created has this hash, okay? If you're downloading from some other source, no problem, download it, but check the hash, okay? If some small amount of change also happened because of our launch effect, the entire uh, uh, hash will change, right? So by checking with this hash, right, you can see that the document has been tampered or not, right. That's the advantage of doing hashing, okay. Hope uh, this concept was clear to you and you were able to understand what this hashing means, right. We'll meet in the next session.